So let's try something a little different. I've been doing the Exploring Stamps channel for almost four years now and it is currently August of 2020. I've been kind of locked up in my home uh, for almost about six months due to the COVID-19 virus. And it was time to reclaim this room for a work office, uh, something that was a little more camera friendly for my work colleagues. And so therefore I gave this room a bit of a refresh moved some things around and thought about using this as an opportunity to try something different with the Exploring Stamps channel. Over the last four years, I've gone on an adventure with the Exploring Stamps channel, building it up to almost about 15,000 subscribers, which I'm super grateful for, and uh, have explored stamps, traveled the world, met some fantastic people. But now I want to try something different. I want to actually interact with the audience, uh, with the online philatelic community, which has grown tremendously over the last few years and has become quite an exciting and engaging dimension of philately and stamp collecting. So I'm looking forward to connecting more with you and learning about the online world of philately and stamps and stamp collecting in general from you uh, in this new show, Hashtag Philately. A few quick things before we get started. Firstly, I'm not an expert at philately. If you know me, you know that I've been learning as I go and pretty much all the videos I've been producing up until today uh, have been documenting my learnings of the wonderful world of philately. So if you're new to the hobby, firstly, welcome and welcome to the channel. I recommend that you watch all of the Exploring Stamps videos uh, back from 2016 up until today because That'll give you the same understanding of philately at the same level at least as I am today. And that's a great place to get started. You will know as much as I know. Also the Exploring Stamps channel got a little too expensive and time consuming to continue producing videos. So I'm hoping that this new video format will be a little more sustainable, but it may not be a success. So it's really dependent on you. If you like these videos or if you don't like them, let me know in the comments and we'll take it from there. One of the things I've been looking forward to doing over the last few months is renovating the space and reclaiming it as an office because I have been video conferencing for my job on my sofa, which hasn't been the most comfortable of situations. So this was an opportunity to do that, but it's a small space. It's like 100, 110, I think, square feet. Also, how much? 145. 145? That's including the closet? Yeah. 145? Yeah. <laughs> so, focus back here. So, this is my uh, cameraman, my wife. You can come closer, I can't see you. There we go. So, Laura has been my cameraman uh, behind the scenes for a number of videos where we go on location. Anywhere that I've gone on location, you can pretty much guarantee that she's holding the camera behind the scenes. Um, and you've actually been in a few videos, especially the Tweezer Tong video. Yes, I gave you your award. She gave me the award in the Tweezer Tong video. And you are on the one you're in Stampex. Yes. So those are the two videos that... No, and the diamond one. The diamond one? Yes. The Colin and diamond. Okay, I guess... <laughs> I guess that counts as well. Anyway, this is Laura. It definitely counts. It definitely counts. Definitely this, counts. this is Laura, and she may make appearances from time to time, if anything, just to correct me for getting the square footage of my room wrong. Thanks, Laura. And talk with your staff friends. Okay, so the point was, it's a small room, but it's a new studio, and let's start talking about online philately. The 
Philately has always had a presence online. I actually argue that Philately was one of the pioneers of the internet, adopting a forum such as chat rooms, message boards, eBay, uh, when the concepts were relatively new back in the early 90s. Uh, and through the early 2000s. But then something happened. Uh, Philately took a break from advancing with the internet world and only recently have we seen a new resurgence of interest and energy in Philately Online. And this is through the various avenues of social media such as uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. And before I even started uh, the YouTube channel there was a presence of Philately that was growing on the social media accounts such as Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. But on YouTube there was a lack of philatelic content. Now today you'll find a number of very good philatelic channels that are posting really interesting content. It's too bright. Okay, so there's also a vast number of blogs out there with really incredible content that is not only enjoyable but informative and uh, very interesting to read through and learn about different perspectives of stamp collecting and philately. Also, a few podcasts have started. Those are also enjoyable to listen to. So one of the things that you can do right now is go read through some of those blogs if you haven't already found them. Uh, check out some of the other YouTube channels and the social media sites as well as listen to some of the podcasts. One very helpful website that was recently created is the digitalphilatelist.com. Uh, it was created and maintained uh, by James Gavin who is well known in the online philatelic community. He actually did a couple of stamp chats for the APS. P.S. Uh, anything that I discuss in these videos will have a link directly to either their social media accounts or to the actual videos that I'm describing or the actual blogs that I'll be uh, talking about. So make sure you're looking at the video description. But the digitalflatlist.com is not only a place that you can go find additional resources or blogs, podcasts that you haven't yet discovered, it's also a place that you can go ahead and request that your blog or whatever content you create gets listed there as well. So it's a valuable tool that is now um, picking up momentum and I hope that you start to leverage it. Definitely go check it out. So one Twitter account that I've been following for quite a while now, uh, I think it was created though in 2020, but is doing absolutely stellar stuff in promoting the hobby and having fun with the online community is Flatta Lovely. It's an account that has been run by a gentleman by the name of John in the UK. Flatta Lovely runs these really great competitions online as well as these great Twitter threads. I don't know if you hear that, that's the ice cream man, one second. Um, what were we talking about? So yeah, Flatter Lovely is getting some incredible online engagement from the community, uh, posting these Twitter threads that anyone can take part in and post any images or content that is related to uh, whatever the day's uh, topic is. He also does these great competitions that are surprisingly difficult. For instance, this one back in July. Guess the value of the machin below. And with loads of incorrect guesses, somebody was able to finally figure out that it was the 37P. He actually sends prizes to the winners. Here's one that I couldn't get as well. Uh, this one is asking which country this stamp is from. Now, you would think this one would be easy, but a number of countries had issued this stamp. Actually, I think this is what you would refer to as an omnibus issue. I think. In philately, an omnibus issue is an issue of stamps by several countries with a common subject and may share a uniform design. Omnibus issues are to be distinguished from joint issues which are usually much smaller in scope. So multiple countries issuing the same stamp with just with a different name and uh, value. Probably more common with the British Commonwealth or French colonies and so on. If I'm wrong, please correct me and I can address it in the next video. Anyway, this particular stamp that Flat Lovely posted was from St. Helena. And I not only got it wrong, but a number of other people did as well. I guess you had to pay attention to the exact length of the name of the country as well as where exactly that value was placed in the bottom right corner. Now, what's particularly interesting about Philetta Lovely's account is not only that he is posting interesting content and competitions and so on, but he's actually started a Patreon with two different tiers in which he is promoting the hobby by sending uh, packs of stamps to people that are taking part in his Patreon. 
And when I go to the Patreon account, you can see that it's about promoting the world of stamp collecting and sharing it with his followers. Uh, there's two different tiers, as I've mentioned. Currently one sends stamps from all over the world, mostly used, but some mint. And will also include a first aid cover or other cover. And the other tier includes a larger pack of stamps with some higher value stamps and some other first aid covers and other philatelic goodies. Touching about what a lot of people are posting and sharing online, they're really enjoying these monthly packs. So just something to check out, maybe you would be interested in joining Flat Lovely's Patreon. Perhaps we can get John from Philat Lovely or uh, even James from the Digital Philatelist to come onto the show and talk a bit more about what their initiatives are uh, and their success so far. Now, one of the things I want to spend time on in the show is showing you some of the stuff that people have sent me. Since I started the YouTube channel, people from around the world have sent me some really cool things. So I'd love to share some of those items. One viewer from Hungary, Akos, who was one of my earlier viewers, you could say, sent me one of his favorite stamps. This one's from Thailand and is considered to be the world's longest stamp. It was issued back in April of 2017, celebrating the 70th anniversary of the late King Rama IX's accession to the throne. According to Canadian Stamp News, I'm looking at an article online, the stamp includes a series of photographs of the king set against a background of luscious green fields. And so we can see an image of it online as well. The longest reign, the longest stamp, featuring, of course, images of King Rama IX uh, during his reign. Now, it shows that it's 170 millimeters long. I'm assuming that this is still the longest stamp in the world. Uh, what is that in inches? I don't have a ruler, but if I, I'll figure it out and I'll post it right here. That's what it is in inches. But yeah, it's, it's a very long stamp. And it made me look up, of course, more about King Rama the Ninth. As you can see uh, on the wiki page, who was reigning from 1946 to his death in 2016. Now, Arcos, who sent me the stamp, is from Hungary. Another cool item that I've received over the last few years also comes from Hungary. It is this mini sheet featuring dinosaurs. Now, what makes this a particularly cool item is that it was sent by the actual artist who designed the stamps. A gentleman by the name of Tibor designed these stamps. Hungary issued them in 2018. And he sent it in a beautiful first day cover along with an information card, in which it tells us that the mini sheet is displaying dinosaurs from the Bacchany Hills in Hungary. I'm sorry if I'm getting pronunciations wrong here. My apologies. In addition to this mini sheet, Tibor sent me a black print, which I didn't really know much about. Now, apparently black prints are like proofs or testing, where they're testing out the imagery uh, before applying the appropriate colors. I'm not familiar at all with proof prints or black prints, uh, but they seem to be a collectible item. This actually has been tagged with a number, 0209, and when I look at the information card, it actually tells me that 2,000 copies of the numbered black print were produced. And so this is number 209 of 2,000, which technically means that this is one of the rarest items in my entire collection. Notice that it's of course also signed by the artist himself. So this is a really cool item for me. Thank you very much. Now this pair of stamps was sent to me from the UK by Simon, who is the dealer for africstamps.co.uk. And he sent me this pair of bilingual South African stamps uh, well, you can see it's bilingual. You can see that the top is South Africa, uh, while the bottom is South Africa, so it's English and Afrikaans. And usually you'll find a lot of early South African stamps kept in pairs with the Afrikaans and English version attached. And the reason why he sent me these stamps is because it's a set of perfins. I actually hadn't seen a South African perfin before. He, of course, knows that I'm originally from South Africa. And the initials of these perfins are DC, Durban Council. These stamps were issued back in the 1920s, I believe 1926 or so, uh, but this is a really cool item, so thank you very much, Simon. Okay, and last one, going back to the UK. This package I also just recently received was sent from uh, Nessa from Mini Print Vintage. You may remember her from the art stamp video where I went to Stampex. Now, the first thing that grabs my attention are the stamps that are on the cover Unfortunately, it got hit with pen, except one of them on the far left here wasn't touched. I don't know why, but that's the one I'm going to use for demonstration because it's telling me to rub with a coin 
for heads or tails. This was a set of stamps issued in 2005. It was part of a larger set, which is Centenary of the Magic Circle. What is the Magic Circle? The Magic Circle is a British organization dedicated to promoting and advancing the art of magic. Okay, so these stamps were celebrating this Magic Circle and uh, there were different stamps issued. This one in particular is a heads or tails stamp. There's a number of instructions on how to perform a magic trick as well, but these particular ones are asking for me to rub with a coin. So I'm gonna do right now and see what is behind the stamp. Okay, so it's tails. I wonder why we don't have any more scratch off stamps. And if I scratch off a stamp, does that cancel it? Now, what Ness actually sent me is quite brilliant. A while back, she started making these masks. She started sewing uh, materials that had stamp-related subjects on them. And uh, I've been wearing mine in public. I went and purchased a couple from her, one for Laura and one for myself. And I really love them. They're not only stylish, but they fit me really well. Well, she sent this as a surprise in the mail. This mask is, of course, Penny Black's. It must be a new design in her fashion line, but these ones are really great. Now, it also comes with a little uh, pocket that you can place the mask in and then it's uh, attached to your, your key ring. Uh, so you can always have it on you whenever needed. She also made one for Laura, a little more custom, I guess, because it's got a West Highland Terry on it. We have two Westies. I'm a big, big fan, so thank you so much, Nessa. I'll post the link to your store in the description if anybody else wants to check these out. Uh, I'm supposed to be going out later tonight to get some essentials, so if I do go out, I'll definitely post some footage, like right now. So I'm going to stop the episode right here. This is of course a pilot, so I'm looking for your feedback. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, if you have a social media account dedicated to stamps that you'd like me and others to follow, definitely post that in the comments as well. There's a lot more to explore in the coming weeks and months. Of course, I have a lot more stuff to show you. Uh, we can address a lot more social media content. Also, we've got the virtual stamp show that's being run by the PTS that's happening October 1st through the 3rd, and I'm super excited about exploring that uh, in the coming weeks. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and as always, happy exploring. Mm -hmm.